Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and in this week's training video, we're going to be going over dynamic advanced filters, where we have the ability to filter out items simply by a single click selection on item type, item size, or even from a purchase price. It's going to be a very powerful training, so let's get started. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you for joining me today. We're going to cover dynamic advanced filters in a way that I hopefully is unique to you. In fact, this type of filtering was inspired by websites like Amazon and eBay where they have uh, the ability to users to filter out or filter in specific data uh, simply by uh, checking them or unchecking them on the left side or perhaps even entering a details here so I wanted to bring this type of filtering to Excel and also I like the ability of having a dynamic filter for example we have currently six types but if we were to add to modify an item say item type and add a jacket to that automatically the type would increase being dynamic so I really like that ability and I wanted to bring that to you today and show you how we can do that of course through tables we always have the ability to uh, filter in, with a table but I want to show you something different in fact tables are a bit restrictive so I want to show you how we can do this by separating the data on a different sheet and then bringing that data into here and that opens up a lot of possibilities like uh, other ones we've covered in the past concerning shared workbooks and things like that ability to, to sharing it so I wanted to do that and in this particular training we can we can filter out items we're going to show you uh, I believe six different ways to filter whether it's through item number item name or through a type through a date purchase price or a quantity we can filter out any of those and all we would need to do is just uh, enter a minimum or a maximum or perhaps even both and it would then filter out those items automatically so it, it's a great way to filter out very easily by a user and they also have the ability to clear the filter as well as to close or hide so we're going to show you how we did that in this particular training we also have the ability to add new items and save new items but we're going to go briefly over that because we have covered that in the past in fact our shared workbook covered that how to add delete update i'll i'll provide a link for you uh, as well for that but we're going to go over that real quick because our main focus today is going to be on filtering and we're going to be using the advanced filter which is an extremely powerful tool and when we use it in the manner that we're using today it's even more powerful because we can uh, not only do we have filters like what we call and like from purchase date to purchase date but we can also use something like a f advanced filter or where where we can have multiple filters and filter them out or filter them in so for example if we only want to show small we just keep that one there so it's very user friendly it's something that uh, I want users to be able to pick up and know how to use even without any Excel training at all and that's the advantage of this kind of workbook where you can have this handed out to people and they can pretty much start using it just by looking at it and that's the that's what we're trying to achieve here so let's go ahead and show you how we did this mostly this workbook is made up of uh, the just one filtering list here where we put all of our filters in here we have the ability to close the filter or open the filter using this button and we also have the ability to clear the filter and that resets it uh, we only have one other sheet and that is the items database and this is where our database of items are located just as if you're familiar with uh, some of my previous videos you know I like to separate data uh, the what the user sees is often not the actual data list uh, and this has super uh, huge advantages when we actually separate the, the data from from that so we can also hide this sheet we can do many things with the actual data and the user can only add new and delete it through a user interface whether it's new whether it's update or whether it's deleting the item they use a user interface and that really protects our data protects the in integrity of the data 
as well as it separates it. So there's some really, really big advantages, and it and it's along the lines of more comprehensive uh, applications, and that's how they work. The front end and the back end are separate, and that's what we like to do with Excel as well when we're building these applications. So the item list is here. The actual list is located in this, and then we use uh, various filters, criteria, and to to filter out our data, and then once our data is completely filtered out, we bring it back into this items list here. We're going to show you exactly how we did that. Also, we have the ability to, we have some other items here. When we're building this list here, what we do is we use, this list is basically cleared out, right? And uh, the, basically the formats are all cleared out because it's dynamic, so we don't know. So let's just manually reset the color. So this list is cleared out, and then it's rebuilt, right? So when we clear the filter, it gets rebuilt. And so it's a really, really powerful, powerful tool here. And uh, let's go ahead and reset that so we can. And so it gets rebuilt very, very uh, fast and rapidly. And what we use is we use some previously created ranges. For example, here is what we call a uh, text search. This particular search is called a text search and I've named this range text search range. So anytime there's a type of a text like for example item number is a text, a name is a text, so when we want to search for that type we use this type of search for text. This is a list type of search. So we have created a range, just one range, and we'll duplicate it here. This is called a list search, right? And it's and it's named list search. I've named this range. These two cells have this name. And to name it, just highlight it, and then just type it in list search. That's it. That's all you would need to do to name a range. Same thing with date search. When we have a date type field, we're going to take this, I'm going to basically copy this range here, and I'm going to place it right here. Because we don't know if this list is long or short, we don't know exactly where this date, it could be down here, it could be up here, so we don't really know where it's going to be placed, so we, what we want to do is we want to copy that. The same thing for a purchase, or we would call that an amount range, amount because it has to do with the dollar amount. And this has been previously formatted, if we click on the home, this has been previously formatted with a currency. And a date has been previously formatted with a date. List has been formatted as general. And number has been formatted with number. So these are previous, oh, it could be formatted as number as well. We could, you could do that, let's do that. We could use it as general or number, but if, you're, if your number's gonna use decimals, you can do that here. We can use decimals, number, but then I'm gonna probably, since my doesn't have any decimal, I'm gonna create no decimals. Let's go ahead and uh, highlight that, bring this down for a little bit so we don't have to keep clicking it, and then bring it down to there. So when we put a number in here, Okay, because I want to use whole numbers, but you may want to adjust that. You may want to adjust that if your numbers have decimals. So numbers are numbers, amount, currency, date is date, list is general. So they're pre-formatted. And also, if you take a look at this, there's a conditional formatting here. For example, if we type a name in here, let's just type in, let's go with name, and type in shirt. And you'll see this automatically goes to dark black. It was gray. And why is that? Well, we've added a conditional format, but in this conditional formatting, manage rules, and we've created one rule, and that rule is if it contains a colon, you've seen this before if you've watched my videos, then I want to format this. If it contains a colon, because our search terms contain a term, how do I want to format it? I want to color it gray, and I want to give it italic, probably should be italic, italic. So that formats it if, it if it contains a colon. If not, otherwise, just apply it. And so that is how that works there. And we don't need to italicize it there. So let's go ahead and update this. I want to make sure, but we don't want to change these. We, this is the result. We want to change the originals here. So list search. Let's go into conditional formatting. And we have the same rule because that is what gets copied over. 
edit rule I do want to italicize it let's go to format and make sure we put italic so that means I want it italic when it contains a colon and I want it gray when it contains a colon if not then it's regular that's just a you can set your format to anyone so now when we clear the filter we see they're both italicized now however when we enter let's say we enter the number three right and it's going to return all the numbers that contain three in there and it's no longer italicized because it's not it's not doesn't contain a colon therefore the conditional formatting does not apply in this case and this is the same so what we've done is we've pre-formatted we pre them it just the way they want and then once using VBA once they're once we want them in here we paste them in here for example I'll paste it in here then I'm gonna determine how many unique items are in the type list and then I'm gonna paste one for every unique item I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it all the way down for however many unique items I'm gonna do the same thing for size I'm gonna determine how many unique sizes there are and then I'm gonna then I'm gonna paste it down. So for example, if we clear that filter and we add right now we have small, medium, large, extra large. If we add a new new size, let's say we change this to extra, extra large, add an X there, and update that item, we'll see automatically now we've got that item in here. And if we unselect the rest, we'll see only that item that we updated, that extra, extra large here is the only one. And if we change it back. If we change it back and we update, let's click on that item, and we update that item, click update, automatically our size gets reduced back. So that's what we call it dynamic advanced filter because it dynamic, the, the ranges and the list change based on the results, which is really powerful because you can use this for any type. And it, it's not very difficult, but there's just a process that must be made before we do that. And I'm going to go over that process exactly so that you can have the same ability in your applications as well. All right, let's raise this up so we can get a better look at the entire application. Now, so you've got the idea. So what basically what I want to do is this. I've, I've got a database here now within this database this is the original data I've labeled each one the type of data that it is this is a text because there's no list this is a text also this is a list I've, I've determined this is a list because there's a good chance that if you use it you're going to use a list with this because it's the same over and over again so they're not necessarily unique whereas a name and item number are unique for each one so we would not want them created they're not unique whereas type and size are generally assigned based on like a list so we've called these lists this is a date because I've assigned it a date right this is a, an amount because it's the purchase price and this is the number which is the purchase quantity so we really have four different types of filters that we can create four different types and I've assigned them this type of filter this gives us the ability so what we're going to do is we're going to go through from one to seven and we're going to build this list based on these types for example the first first one are text you see text text so we built text text then we skip one and the next one is a list so what we do is we say okay this one's a list so we know we need to build a list so how do we do that well we're gonna take a look at all these then we're gonna build a unique list and we're gonna put that unique list right here then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out how many unique items there are then I'm gonna then I'm gonna know how many to build in this list then I'm gonna be able to copy this and paste it down that many times then I'm gonna paste in the list I'm gonna do the same thing for size size I'm gonna determine how many there are I'm gonna create a unique list using an advanced filter I'm gonna put that list right here in decay then I'm gonna figure out how many uniques there are I'm gonna build my list right here and then I'm gonna paste in all the val all the unique values here for the next one for date what I'm going to do is I know it's date, so all I need to do is pull our date, our, which is right here, our date range right here. It's already labeled date search, and I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste it right here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing for amount and same thing for number. I'm going to copy those ranges. I'm going to paste them here 
in here. That's all I'm going to do. It's very simple, but uh, there's a process, so we'll go through that. Now, you'll notice we have some numbers here, and these pertain to the database, right? When we, for example, when we enter, and let's say we enter three, just like we did before, right? And it's going to filter out. Uh, let's go ahead and clear that and put in three. So let's say we put in three and we have the return three. So now we see, now we need to know what column to put this three in. When we do the advanced filter, I need to know what column. This helps us determine what column. So column 26 is actually AA, AA here, right here, right? Z, there's 26 letters in the alphabet, so Z is 26. A, and this is 27, column 26 equals column, column. So that's column 27. So we know that that's column 27. And we build it, we put a star, three stars. So that means any number that begins and ends, any number that uh, has three within it, it will return. So that helps us. So that why, that's why we have three different, because they all contain three. When we put a star on either side of it, it means contains. Without that star, it would be equal to three. Okay, so but I want to I want to know any value that contains the three. For example, now if I want to build it, uh, put it down even more, I can say sure. Now we're only going to have two. So two contain three. Two contain shirt. So that helps us drill down. So now we have shirt. So now we've also in column twenty eight put the shirt in. This is our advanced filter. When we build out our advanced filter, we're going to take all of this as the criteria and bring it over and put it right in here. Put it right in here. Then we're going to continue on with our criteria. Continue on, continue on. There's no types. So we, we continue on. We continue more. And then we look for with sizes. But there's no sizes, so we're good. Continue on. And then we have our final results here. Now let's say we add a size. Let's say we add a size. Uh, let's go ahead and unselect these and only large. Okay, so now we have one result, large, right? So if we look back here, we see large. Now we're filtering large. So you see each time our list gets reduced, it starts with our main list. Then we filter by three and shirt, and that returns two values. Then there's no, there's no type criteria. We didn't specify type, so the result is also two values, right? Then we want to filter down by size. So we continue on, continue on. Now we only have one that's size. Now we have, because two, this one is large and extra large, but only one contains large. So we reduce it down and our final results are here. We take our final results and we paste them right into here. That is how we do it. That is how it's done. And let's go into the VBA code so we can see exactly how this works. All right, let's get under the hood into the VBA module and see how we've gone ahead and done this. Into the Developers tab, you can click on Visual Basic. If you don't have the Developers tab open under the File and Options, you'll be able to get there through Customize Ribbon and make sure the Developers is selected and checked there so that you have the Developers tab visible. Alt F11 will also get you into Visual Basic. Now that we're in Visual Basic, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have done here. We do have some on sheet macros, but not very many of them. Let's go ahead and take a look. We have our on key true. This is for our tab. I have set automated tabs and we have a video for that, but it allows us to tab automatically do just specific cells. We have covered that before, but all of that is done into the macros. So you, you do have the ability to set that through the tab macros and simply by changing the cells here, you can automate the tab macros. So that is what on sheet and this will say once we activate the, the worksheet, that becomes active. When we deactivate the worksheet, those tabs are not automated for other sheets. We have some change macros. So that means when we make a change, we are going to have something done. And this is called the worksheet change. And what is that that we're going to be working on? Well, DE 
6 through E999, we want some changes. And what is that? Well, that basically means that if we make a change to any of these, starting with D6 all the way through E99, we want something to happen. And we also want to make sure two things. We want to make sure A9 is foul, false. A9 false here. We want to make sure that's false before we do anything. If it is true, we do nothing. This is skipped. Why is that? Well, because A9, if we take a look at that here, it's one of our, in our hidden uh, columns, A9 right here is false. And the reason we want that is because when we clear the filter, this is going to go to true and we're going to make our changes. We're going to clear this out and we're going to rebuild this list. Well, I don't want to run our filters. I don't want to run. I don't want to, you know, when we run our filters is when we do this and this, but I don't want that to happen when I'm clearing it out. But clearing it out also makes a change, right? But that type of change, I don't want to load the filters. So when we clear the filters, we set A9 to true. When it's finished clearing, we set it back to false. So we want to make sure that only the user change, only this kind of change, uh, actually is going to run our filter. So only that change. So that's why we must check. A9 must be false before we proceed. So we also want to know, I want to know what row they have selected. I want to put that row in A7 here. So when we make a change, I want to know that that change was made to a14, that row, we're going to need that row when we run our filter. When we run this macro here, run filter, I need to know that row. And I want to store that row in A7. So that's very important. That is it. We're going to go into the run filter very shortly, but I wanted to show you what happens on the sheet itself. We have some macros for selection change. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. Selection change, as a reminder, is simply when you select when you select something happens well what happens when you select and I'll show you what happens and it's just a few lines of code here so it's basically going to say again we need to make sure that a9 is false we don't want to run any of this if it's true if it, if it's being cleared if our range is being cleared nothing will happen First, we want to say I want to record the target row again. I want to know what row. We're going to put that in A7. And I'm going to set A9 to true. So because I don't want this, I don't want this to run again. I don't want to get a like a loop. So by setting this to true, it prevents this, all this from running again until the very end. So that really helps us until we set it back to false right here. Let's go ahead and open this up a little bit so we know what's going on here. Okay, there we go. We can clearly see uh, what's going on through D. So this is only for D6. And basically what I want to say is if it equals this, then put this in. Now, what is that? Well, that is our checkboxes. If you look up here, our un unchecked box is this little double, lot, double note, like double quote there. And this, and our selected one, is that B, whatever that's called. That little B or strange shape, that is our checkbox. Our unchecked box is this little, looks like double apostrophe there, whatever it's called. So the double apostrophe is unchecked, and the B is the checkbox, right? These are wingdings, home, wingdings font, wingdings font. If you want to insert those and look for those, you can just go ahead and go to insert, symbol and then you can look under wingdings and you can find them either here or here right so they're here they're located here here or here so you can find them in your wingdings font and that's where i found them so basically what i want to say if it's unchecked check it if it's checked uncheck it so that's all that i want vba to do in this case so again if it's got that uh looks like double apostrophe then give it the b if it's got the B, then give it the double apostrophe. And then after that, after that, I want to run the filter. We need to run the filter. The filter is going to either add or remove items in our list based on that. So when we add t-shirts, it's going to add t-shirts back in here. When we unselect it, it's going to remove t-shirts from the list. So I want to run that filter right after I make the change. So 
that's what we that's why we run the filter we'll go into that macro shortly and then I'm gonna reset a9 to false and then I'm gonna end and what does this do this makes sure that nothing else happens it just ends so we want to make sure that we don't continue with anything else we're done we've run the filter we've set a9 back to false we're not, so we're good however if the target equals B, which is that B, the checkbox, I need to give it an uncheck box, run the filter, send uh, A9 back to false. So that is that is only, these macros are only used for our check and uncheck. That's why we're only focused on column D, column D. So that is how we handle that. We do have something in G33M, and what does this do? All that that does is, one, it puts our target row in B1, target row in B1, and it loads the item. What is that? Well, the target row helps us here, right here, 18, highlight the selected row, and then it runs a macro. It basically, and we've gone over this a few times, so look for load item. I don't want to go into this in detail. This is focused. But all it does is it takes all the data in here and it loads it right in this here. So that's this is just a column marker. We don't need that right now. Maybe we'll keep it in, but it's not important. It's just a column. It shows you what column this is. So that is what that does. So when we select anything from G13 all the way to M and down, if we make any selection, do two things. Put the row, selected row here. Why is that? Because that highlights the selected row. We've been over that too before. Home, conditional formatting, manage rules, and you'll see we probably don't need so many. I'll remove some of those. Let's get rid of this duplicate. And we'll get rid of this duplicate. Okay, so B1 equals row. And that highlights the selected row. This allows us to color alternate rows. We've also been over that. So that is how we do that. Back into VBA we go. We are done with the on sheet macros. We've covered all the macros that cover on sheet. Quickly. We'll go into the other macros, code reset, stop the calculation. This helps speed up our application and reset calculation. This resets the calculation. We've been over that as well. This just helps us speed up. And item macros. Again, I'm going to go over very quickly. These macros we've gone over a few times. They help us add a new item. They clear the contents. They change the button sets. They set the item to new status. This save item updates and saves our item in the data table. It takes all this information and it actually saves it in here in our main data and then it reloads the list, excuse me, here and then it reloads the list into here. I'm moving quickly because this is not the focal point of today's training. We're going to go into advanced filters and that we're going to go over a lot of detail. So that is all we do for save update item. Uh, Cancel new does just that. It cancels the new. Delete item will delete the item and refresh the list. And then load item. This load item is what we did. It, you know, when you select it, loads the item details up here. You will, of course, will have the workbook and you can go over these in detail. I have been over this before. Refresh item table. All that that macro does is it takes everything in this table and it copies it over into this table right here. So that's all that that does. Moving along, we have a uh, saved message. This is a, uh, when you save an item, it provides a fade out message, something we've also gone over. So that is all the item macros. That just goes over how we add, remove, update, and it gives you all of the, uh, all. so we click new item, we can save the item, we can cancel new. So that's basically allows us to add items to our database, super powerful but not the core of today's training. I want to go into today's training, which is the filtering, the advanced filtering. And we're going to call it dynamic advanced filters because these lists are dynamic. They change based on our data, and that is super powerful. So that is something I want to bring to you today, and that's all done really through just a few macros here in the filter macros. Let's go over briefly. We have our hide filters and show filters. These, all they do is they hide these buttons or show the buttons and hide these columns. So for example, when we close the filters, it hides D and E. And then when we show it, when we click this button, it shows the buttons and shows column D and E. That's all that that does there. So it's super powerful. Again, we'll go over quickly on this. It just hides the buttons or shows the buttons 
hide the columns or shows the columns based on those. That's pretty much it. Next, we have clear filter list. Now, when we clear the filters, we're going to clear our some results and we're going to run two different macros. I'll go over that. Clearing the filters. That's this button here. Right click, assign macro, and we clear the filters. Right? We run that macro. Now, somebody did ask me, how do I assign these shapes into, right, into these buttons? And it's pretty simple. All I need to do is insert, let's say, a picture. And then I've got a few pictures, let's say, on my inherent images. And so let's say we want to assign a nice picture here. Let's say, uh, refresh. So we just go ahead and we insert the picture down and we reduce the size like this. And then we let's say we want to insert a button. We insert a button here. Insert a shape. Use the rounded rectangle. Create it like this. And we can add words. We can add words like refresh. Then we click on here and back into, we can center that like this. I, let me pin this for a few minutes. And then we're going to, then we put this over here and then make sure we format it. We bring forward then we can format the button under format whichever format we might like let's say we're using this format and then we reduce the size a little bit let's say go to there and then let's say let's bring it off to the right side and then I'll go ahead and group it and that is how and then I'll control it and then I'll just group it and that is how I create the buttons and how I insert those buttons somebody asked me that I wanted to make sure to get that I didn't want to leave you off that. So now we, we know how we're going to clear those filters. We know how we close the filters and open the filters. So that's how we run those two macros back into the VBA. Now our two main macros are going to be load the filters and run the filters. So those are two macros. Those are two macros that we're going to load the filters and run the macros. Loading the filters does just this. It clears the filters and it allows us to load all of this. So every time every time we create we re update an item, I want to load this because we may have made changes. So it basically clears this out and reloads all of the data. So that is what load. And let's go into that and into the detail of that so we can see how that is done. So under load filters here, let's go over the items of this macro and see how it's done. We're going to define some a whole numbers here, filter row, data column, last item filter row, last item row, and unique list row. I've gone over the basics of this. Now we'll get into the detail of how, and then the filter type of string. We want to stop the calculations. This makes it faster. And remember, I showed you that here. All that that macro does is go calculations to manual and screen updating to false. So we know how that works. Next, what I want to do is I want to clear old results. Right? If we're going to be running new filters, I want to make sure that any old results, results are clear. And that is sheet 2, AA4 through AJ99 here starting here a4 through all the way over there i just want to clear out everything these are results remember our data is here and then we apply some filters and the results go here so i want to make sure all of that is clear right we're going to start over from scratch so we want to clear those any any old filters and that's important so they get cleared in that manner just through that one line of code we're going to work primarily with with sheet one and sheet two but we're going to define it with sheet one here and what we're going to say is a9 we're setting this to true remember we went over that just a few minutes ago i want a9 to be true i don't want anything anything here to run i don't want i don't want this to run and i don't want this to run and how do we keep all of this from happening we set a9 to true because a9 because this only runs if a9 is false this only runs if a9 is false so so that is how we prevent this from running. And that is how we prevent this from running, is A9 is false. So when we mark it to true, we know that changes made won't run. So that's a very important step. So we've got to set A9 to true. And of course, before this macro is done, we're going to set it back to false. The first thing I want to do is I want to know what is our last 
item. I need to clear out our current filter list, so I need to find the last used row. I need to I need to find in our in sheet one. I need to find the last row. What is the last row? Column D. In this case, it's 31 because I want to clear it out. So we need to clear out the list to rebuild it. So we need to know the last row to clear it out. So we can define that last row here under last item filter row D999 and xlup.row. This will define it. In this case, it's 31. What I'm going to do is now I have a clear range. What is the clear range? I forgot to show this to you because it was kind of hidden. Let's go and look at this now. Clear range is this. See, it's kind of hidden. It's this right here. And this I've defined as clear range. And all of this is, it does have some formatting. And basically, I want to take this range and I want to put it right here. And this is going to just cover, it's going to cover this. So I've taken this and I've used this and I've placed it and I'm going to copy it all the way down here. And basically that's going to clear everything. It's a way of clearing out uh, our format, but we don't have to set colors through VBA. We don't have to set styles. It just, it, we set it, you know, it sets the font. So it automatically resets everything. So it's a really great way to clear something out, including clearing the formats, clearing the fonts, clearing the colors, clearing the borders all with just one simple range, so it's actually a shortcut. So what we do is we copy that clear range, and then we paste that range into the entire range, starting at D6 all the way to E in the last item filter row. So we paste it all, paste that all down, and then what we don't want to do is I want to clear out B. B is our helper. B is going to tell us what column and the type of column here. So we want to make sure to clear that out as well because that has that has a lot to do with our filters as well. So I want to clear that out. So that's cleared also. So we've done that. Now we want to now I'm going to go down. Now what I want to do is I want to start here and I want to go all the way down and I'm going to base everything in here. I'm going to base it on this here based on text, text, list, list, date, amount. So everything in this is going to be based on this. So we're going to start at row 6. Starting at row 6 here. And then we're gonna we're gonna loop. I'm gonna run a loop from column one to column seven. Base it on this, and I'm gonna apply those filters all the way based on whatever types of database they're set. So it's gonna be really helpful. Let's go ahead and go through that. So we're starting at filter six. Now I remember here's a loop we just spoke of. Data column equals one to seven. Right, we need to know that's on sheet two database. The filter type is gonna be sheet two row to data column. Row to here, data column. First is going to be text, second text, the third one's going to be list, list again, date, amount, and number. So it's going to go through that loop and it's going to assign that type to our variable called data type. Data type right here. So, excuse me, filter type, filter type right here. I need to know the filter type because then we're going to perform some actions based on that type. So first we set the filter type. Now we can go through multiple actions. Okay, if it's a filter, if it's a text type, do this. If it's a list type, do this. Right? If it's a date type, do this. You know, if it's amount type, do this. And number type, do this. So based on that type, we can set certain certain parameters. So let's go ahead and look at that now. If it is a text type, I want to do some things. First of all, I want to take our range. Remember we defined a text range? And I want to copy that. Remember it's defined right here. Right here, text. Our text range has already been defined here. Text search. That's a defined range. So that's on sheet one. So now that we know our text range, what I want to do is I want to take that and I want to paste it right here when it's a text. That's what I want to do because I know it's a text type of field, so that's what we're going to do. So if it's a text type, copy this and paste it. Where are we going to paste it? Right at whatever filter row we're on in D. And we're going to paste everything. Paste the formats, paste the fonts, paste everything. And next up, I want to enter some value. Here is just kind of a placeholder. Look, look at this, right? It says search by item. I don't really need this. I could probably delete it because it's going to be replaced. It's going to be replaced with enter item or enter name, right? It's going to take this header. Actually, it's going to take this header right here and it's going to replace. It's going to go enter. Then it's going to take the header name. Then it's going to add a colon. 
So it's going to take that, and we do that with the line right here. So it's going to say E and the filter, E, right? E is the column we're focused on. Now E, column E, right? E, E in the column. And what do we want there? All right, what do we want? We want, you know what? You see that kind of flip? I don't like that, right? You see that? When we, when we, when we select many cells, I'll show you how to get rid of that. It doesn't happen now, but sometimes. Let's, let's fix that right now. Sheet one, you see how we have this? If we select more than one, make sure that is both on both and the worksheet changed. Okay, now we're good. Just in case something changes, that's good. So that means if we're going to select, if we're changing more than one cell, let's exit the sub. We're focused on one cell at one time. Back into there. So on column E, enter and the header. Remember the headers in, in row three, headers in row three, data column and the colon. The colon is very important because that colon defines our conditional formatting based on the italics and the gray font. So we need to enter that and then I also want to enter in B. I want to know what the data column is plus 26. I need to know what the column is. So it's the data column plus 26. So basically what I want to say is whatever column this is, whatever column this is, in this case it's 2, plus 26 is going to be 28 because I need to know where to put the information here. This is column 28. So AB, right? If this is B, AB is 20. If B is 2 because there's 26 letters in the alphabet, so AB is 28. So we just add 26. I've made it very simple because when I need that 28 right here because when I enter the name, right? When I enter the name, this will, this will have zero results. When we enter, let's clear the filter and enter test. So when we enter that, I want to make sure that that test gets entered right here, right here. I want to make sure I know what column that is entered. Okay, so that's important. And there's no results, no results. So we should make sure, let me see that. You see how I didn't clear out? I got to fix that. So what happened was there's no results, right? So we need to clear this out. All right, so what we want to do is we want to actually clear out the data before. So I've got it down here. So let's go ahead and, and raise it up. Let's go ahead and put our no data. That's be, we'll put it all the way at the top. So that means we're going to clear out, regardless whether there's data or no data, we're going to clear out our existing data right here. So that's going to help. Now let's go ahead and put this back where it belongs. Okay, good. So we've cleared out data regardless of there. And so now when we reset that, and we clear the filter and we go put in test. We'll make sure that that's cleared automatically. But if we put, put uh, another value in there, good. Now it's going to. Okay, so we've cleared that up. So now we know exactly how we're going to run that. So let's go back into the filters, back where we were. We've got text type. We know why we're putting the data column is. Now we're going to increase the filter row. We've placed this text. We've placed it here. So now we need to, now I want to skip one, right? I want to go to the next one, but we're going to skip two. We're going to leave a blank and we're going to add, now we're moving on to the next one. That's why we say filter row equals filter row plus two. So it starts out at six and now we're down. Now we're going to go to the next column. Now the next column in this case is also again text, right? Now we've gone from one. Now we've got text again, so we're going to do the same thing. We're basically going to take this text, we're going to copy it over, copy it here. We're going to add, let's go ahead and clear that. We're going to add enter name because that's the header, and so we're going to move there. So that's easy. So we're going to loop through that one more time. So now the next one is list type. So what do we do on list type? If it's list type in column three, column three is a list type. And again, remember what I want to do is when it's a list type, I want to take all these values. I want to get the unique items and I want to put the unique items right here. I want to determine how many unique items there are. Then I want to copy and paste this format here because it's a list type. I want to copy this format here. I want to paste that format all the way here. Then I want to take all of those unique items and I want to paste them right 
here. That is how we handle list type. Let's go ahead and see how that's done. It's a little bit more code, but not too difficult. The first thing I want to do is I want to delete filters. When we delete filters, we want to make sure that we're deleting named ranges. And when we look under formulas, name manager, every time we create a advanced filter, we have two names. We have extract and we have one more. We have criteria. Criteria is not currently here because the last one we didn't use it. But if we do that, so sometimes we have criteria. I want to delete both extract and criteria. I want to delete them. One's already deleted in this case. Because every time we do, do that, so the, all we're going to do is run this macro right here. It's going to delete extract and delete criteria. Every, remember this. If you run multiple advanced filters like we are doing here, it's very important to delete. If you're running the same advanced filter, again and again, it may not be as important, but if you're running different advanced filters, very important. Delete this. They get created each time, but this will mess it up if you don't delete when you're running different advanced filters. In, in this case, we're running different ones. We're running uniques. We're running lots of different ones. So all you need to do is create this macro just as I've done, and then before you run an advanced filter, just run this macro, delete filter. So that's what I do. You'll see continuously before I run an advanced filter, here's, for example, here's our advanced filter. I'm deleting the filters here. So we're running that macro every time. And in fact, I want an advanced filter now, right? I want to get the unique items. Again, it's, we're going to use advanced filter. We're going to, we're going to take this list. I'm going to run an advanced filter. Here's what I'm doing. I'll show you. I'm going to go into the data column. We're going to run advanced filter, advanced, and we're going to copy to another location, and we're going to use unique records only, no criteria, no criteria, because it's just unique. And the list range must include the header, so let's go ahead all the way down, must include the header, and I'm going to paste it into K3, K3 right there, including the header, and click OK. So that's all we're going to do. That's all I'm going to do through VBA, and then I want this unique list right here. That is what we're doing through VBA. So we'll go ahead and go through that. So first thing I want to do is I want to delete the filters as we were just went over. Next thing I want to do is on E in the filter row, minus one equals sheet two. So what I want to do is I want to place the value of the filter row minus one. E in the filter row. Well, what is that? Let's go ahead and go and show you that here. E in the filter row. I want the header name. I want this name and I want it right here. I want to know the type. The filter row, remember we're skipping is here, right? We're on here. But the filter row minus one is here. I want to put the name right here. What name? Where are we going to find that name? We're going to find that in row three of our database. I want to put the name. I want to know what the list is, and I want it right here, size or list. So I want to put that. So that is what we're doing with that line of code right there. Sheet two, row three in the data column. This is our header. Let's go ahead and write that in. Header name. So we know what that is. So I want to put that header name there. Next thing I want to do is I want to know the last row. We need to run our advanced filter, but I need to know the last row of the data. I need to know this last row. Remember, if we're going to run, get the unique list, I need to know what the last row is. So first we have to determine that 32 is the last row. And we can do that with endl xl up right here. So the last item row is sheet 2. We'll just use the large row, the maximum, the data column, the current column we're on. What is the last row? End XL up row. This will give us the last row. We need that last row when we run our advanced filter. Also, if there was any values in K, that's our unique list, just clear them out. I don't want any old values because we're going to run a new advanced filter. So I want to make sure that the old advanced filter results have been cleared out. Next up is we are going to run our advanced filter. And the way we do that is we run a range. It's going to start out in three, in row three of our data column. It's going to start out right here. It's got to include our headers, right? Row three of whatever column we're on all the way to the last row of that column. That's the range. So we need to define that range. And it's a variable column, right? We don't know what column we're on. So that's why we're using cells, because the column is variable. Our data column, three, this is the first cell of our range. This is the second cell of our range. 
the, the last row and the current column. So this is our range that we're going to run. And we're going to run, there's no criteria, right? We just want the unique values. There's no criteria. So we're going to copy that. We're, we're going to copy it to K3, right? K3. And we want the unique. That is it. This one line of code will get us this list right here. So once that's run, we know the list. Now we know the list. Now we need to know how many unique items are in the list. It's important to know what, how many unique items. The reason I need to know is because I need to build this list. So I need to know how many times should I copy this format, copy it down. So we need to know how many unique lists, how many unique items are in the list. And we can do that simply by knowing what the last row is. So we just get the last row. If the last row is 10, we know that there's, it starts at 3, so we know that, of course, there are 7 items because it ends at 10. So we can do that in VBA. Let's go back into the, the model here. And we can say the unique item list is sheet 2K. And we just get the last row, the last row here, minus 3. That's going to get us how many unique items. Now we know. We just have to, if there's... We need, if the unique items is less than one, we're going to skip. We don't want to do any of this. If there's, for some reason, there's no unique items, we want to skip this. So we're going to skip. We're going to go from here to here if there are no unique lists. So assuming there is not, what we're going to do is we're going to take our list search copy. What is this list search range? Again, that is this right here. That is the predefined range for lists which is right here, list range, list search. That is the range. And what we're going to do is going to copy that, paste that right here. We now know how many rows because we have the number of rows. So we know how many. So we're going to copy it. And here we know we, we've got the copy and we're going to paste it all and we're going to paste it right in, paste it all right here right into D. Copy it and paste it into D. Then, now we've got it just in one row, but now we want to copy it from that row and we're going to paste it all in. We're going to paste it all. How many unique list item? Minus one. Why do we do that in two steps? Well, we do that in two steps is because we have to add additional information in here, like uh, we need to put in the values, the values of those cells are in K, starting at K4 all the way to the last items. Put in those values and we also want to put in this. I need to know what type. There's multiple lists so I need to know which is it. Is it type or is it size or what is the value? So that's going to help us. So in 2B, I know I'm moving fast but we got a lot to cover. This is going to probably be well over an hour training so get your coffee. Make sure you have it. So in B, we need to put the header value. I want to know what the header. Header's in row three, data column. And just in case, for our next, we're going to clear out. We no longer need the unique values. We've already copied them over. We're going to clear them out just in case so that we're, when we use them for the next time, they're cleared. Next, we're ready to move down the filter row because filter all plus the unique list. We need to know. Now we're ready to move down to the next one, but how many do we move down? We know how many to move down because we have the unique list, the unique list items plus one. Now we know whatever the current filter row is, we're going to move that down so we can get ready for the next one. So it's going to say the filter row equals the filter row plus however many plus one is going to get us right here because we need to get ready for the next one. So now the filter row is 18. And we're going to go, in, in this case, uh, we have another list, so we're going to duplicate. In column D, we have the size, so we're going to duplicate. We're going to go through the same procedure. We're going to go through the same thing again, and we're going to get the unique list, in this, time, in this case, for size. So that'll get us the uniques for size. Next up, we have date. When it's a date, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. We are going to copy over. We're going to say, I need to know what the header row is, and we're going to put that in E. So for example, when it's a date, I want to know what the header is, and I want to put it right here. Filter row, now, now we're at filter row 24, minus 1, column E, equals, what does it equal? It equals row 3 whatever column we're on. Remember, we're going from 1 to 7, right? So now we're on column 5, 6, 7. We're on 5. 
5 is going to give us the purchase date. It's going to put it right here. Now what we need to do is all we need to do is we need to take this. We're on a date. So we know we take this range, date search, copy it, paste it right in here. That's what we're going to do through VBA. Date search copy. We're going to take that range I just showed you. We're going to copy it. We're going to paste it into the filter row. That row keeps track of what row we're on. Now we're going to say range B in the data column. We need to put our columns here. 31 and 34. Well, why 34? Why are we adding 3? Because when we, when we use a unique range like this, we need to add 3 because our our criteria uses two, the purchase date from and the purchase date to. So when we set from and to, or from the price and to the price, from the purchase quantity and to the purchase quantity, because it's a range. So this is and, you notice the and here, and this, and that. So we need two columns when we run our criteria for these things. We need two. Notice item, these texts, they only have one column, but when we're working with quantities, prices, or dates, we need two columns because it's a range. It's not just one. It's from this date to this date. So our froms go here, go here, just one row. Our twos go here. So let me show you how that works. So if we add a from date of one, one, purchase date, and then we add it to five, one, and then we pull that up, you see, now we have purchase date is greater than and less than or equal to this. So we use two, from and two. So that's what I mean by that. And I'll show you how we add those in in shortly in our next macro. But that is how we do it for this macro. So that's why we need, I need to know column 31 and I need to call column 34. So that's why both are important. So that tells us exactly where to place this date. It tells us exactly where. So we just, when we make a change, we just look here and say, oh, what column do we put it in? 34? Oh, okay, put it in 34. So that tells us, that's why we need to put these columns in. That's why B and the filter row plus 1 equals 26 plus 3. I know to add 3. So I know it's a little bit confusing, but when you walk through the code, you'll see 31 plus 3 is 34, 32 plus 3. So that gives us our range, and it really is powerful there. And we do that the same thing for both uh, price and quantity because they're both used in ranges, minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum, or from and to. We use both of those, pretty much the same thing. The same thing for amount. When we go to amount, we're going to, oh, sorry, filter row equals filter row because we use two. This uses two rows, so we need to skip three to go to the next one. Same thing. So both number and type and amount are exactly the same. Exactly the same. All we're doing is we're copying over the format that we set for the amount or copying over the format that we set for number. We're going to paste it in. We're going to create our column, either 26 plus 3, the data column. We're adding 26, and that is it. That is how we build it. We're going to set A9 back to false, and we're going to reset the calculation. That is how we, when we clear the filter, it rebuilds this filter. So example, when we want to do that, we just add, let's say we want to add a size, extra small, and click update the item, and now our size increase one more, and everything gets dropped down. So it's very dynamic in the sense that it really grows or shrinks along with your data. So it's really powerful. Next up, let's go into the run macro, which is the last macro that we're going to be covering, and that is how we run the filter all the way through. So let's go into that right now. All right, this one macro, run filter, is going to do all of the filtering for us. This one macro will take care of everything for us. We've defined some long, such as active row, data column, the first list row, last list row. And let's walk through this uh, one more time just so we know what's going on. Uh, the idea is this. Once a user makes a change to anything in this column, what I want to do is I want to take it through three different steps, three different advanced filters. The first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this list and I'm going to base it off this criteria here. 
any criteria. Now we're not going to include we're not going to include the size and we're not going to include the type. Those two we're going to do in this next two parts. But if there's an item number, an item name, uh, purchase dates, quantities, or price, we're going to run those filters, right? Those five filters through this list, and the results are going to go right here. Then. I'm going to run the filter again in the second. If there's any types that have been selected, if there's any types, it's going to be right here. I'm, so I'm going to run whatever the results are, I'm going to run through criteria two, whatever types have been selected, and the results are going to go right here. I'm going to do that one more time with a third criteria, and that's going to be size. I'm going to run through the size because the size are list. There could be multiple. It could be this or this or this or this, right? Whatever's here, then I'm going to run this filter through this criteria and I'm going to get those final results and they're going to here. I'm going to take those final results, I'm going to copy the data, whatever data is here, I'm going to determine the last row of the results. I'm going to take the data here and I'm going to copy it over into this. And I've already cleared out, we added the clear, so we've cleared out all the data previously. And we're going to paste whatever results are in right in here. We're not going to use copy and paste, we're going to use value so that the format stays the same and everything's very easy and it's quicker than copy and paste. But that is the idea. Once again, we're going to take the data here, we're going to use this criteria, criteria, whatever criteria is here, we're going to get the results right here. We're going to run that through one more test through criteria type. We're going to put the results right here, once again through size, and put the results here, copy that data over into the item. So it's about four different steps that we're going to run through, and I'll show you exactly how you did that. We're going to do that through VBA. So into the run filter macro, which we have here, We've determined some last information. We need the last rows of each of those results and criteria so that we can determine that. We're going to mark A9 as true because we're working within this filtering information, so we don't want anything else to happen on the sheet while we're working, so we need to do that. Again, this is what I just added, clearing the contents of the, the existing filter. We're clearing that. Remember, since it's this is not our original data, I can clear this at any time. No problem, right? Clear the filter. No problem. The list just comes back. So we can clear. So the first thing I want to do is clear this. Our data is always here. Our data is always here, so we can clear out. So the first thing I want to do is clear that list out. So we've done just that there. And then we need to determine the field type, what the current filter we're running. Remember, we're storing in A7 our current row. A7 is whatever we've just made a change to. For example, if we make a change to V neck, right, our, that was 13, that row we just made the changes. So I want to store that row in 13. Now we're going to take that 13 and we're going to assign a variable to it called ACT row in our VBA, active row or if that's what you want to call it, and we're storing that here. And also our data column, what column is it? Remember our column stored in B. B is our column, so that is, is going to store that. If it's, a, if it's a number, that's going to help us. If it's not a number, we won't use it, so it's no problem. And then on the text change, on the text change here, if D and the value equal L, why would we say that? This is text change, because if we need to know what type of change the user made. Did they make a change to a text? Did they make a change to a from or to? I need to know what type of change they made. And by figuring out what is on the left of it, is it a from or is it this little is it this little symbol here? What is that? That's L. That's L in uh, you know in Wingdings font. So if it's an L, right? If this is an L, then I know they made a change to a text type of file. I need to know that. So we, we figure out, so if it's an L, we know they made a change. So now, okay, now that we know we, they've made a change to the text, now I need to determine is it blank or does it contain a colon? If it contains a colon, right, we know it's not really a search item. We know that's just the default text. If it's, so that means what we're saying, we're going to use this. We're going to say if the in string value equals colon does not equal zero, what does that mean? Well, that means if it contains a colon, if E and the current row contains a colon, does not equal zero, means or E and active row is empty. So if either of these conditions 
If either of these conditions are true, meaning it, like it's a one, which means it contains a colon, or it's blank, then I want to make sure that we clear that clear this out. So, for example, let's go through that with you. If if this contains a colon, it means a default text. Or if it's blank, if it's blank, what I want to happen, I want column 27 over data. I want to make sure to clear that out. What is that? Column 27. I want to make sure this is clear out or name or wherever we made it. So that means if it's a colon, I want to make sure it's empty, right? Because the user has not put in any search term. So I want to make sure it's clear. So that's what we're doing there. We're clearing that out. So we're saying, let me reduce this. We're not using this right now, but we need the space. Okay, so we're saying if it contains a colon or if it's blank, then what? Sheet 2, 4, that's the 4. That's where our criteria goes. The data column, we know the data column that comes from B, right? That tells us what column. Clear the contents. Otherwise, if it's not blank and it doesn't contain a colon, then whatever the user put the value, whatever value is, put it right here. Else, Four in the data column equals, here's the star and the star. It begins and ends with a star. Why is that? That means that it means containing. We're going to find any value that contains, contains it. And what are we using? E and the active row. What's that again? E in the active row. Let me show you. E in the active row is here. E. So if I put in, in here, let's say, uh, dash one, right? It's going to return every value that's dash one. Why is that? Because, again, star dash one, that's what it puts there. In column number, this is 27, column 27, equals column, right, 27. So we know that's column 27, so that's why we have it there. And so we, that's why those column numbers here are so important, because we have to know where to put it. So that's why it helps us. So that is what it does there. So it says E in the active row, it puts the star on either side, and it puts that data right in there in text. Moving on to date, if D in the column equals from or minimum, why both of those, from or minimum? Because both of those, both of those, we use the greater than, greater than sign. And then E in the count. let me go ahead and show you what that is. So, for example, from or minimum, right, or minimum, same thing, minimum. So in either one of these three cases, if the user, if it contains the minimum or from, then add it. So, for example, when we put the purchase price greater than minimum of 50, it's going to, one, it's going to filter out, and it's going to add here greater than or equal to 50. See that? And if we change that, and the same thing, we're going to say the next part is, if it contains two or max, then put less than or equal. So if we put 75 here, it's going to add less than or equal right here. So that's the next step in the VBA code right here. So it says, if it's two or max, then less than or equals. So that's the same thing. So we put that in there. So this covers us for amounts dates or numbers from so it says on date amount or number from from or minimum put the greater than on date amount or number two or max put the less than or equal to so that's how we do it now we've got our now we've got our main data in here we're going to run our advanced filter and again we're going to delete any named range any named ranges that have criteria in it or anything like that again so criteria or extract we're deleting those because that's important before we run our advanced filter we need to know our last data row of our date this is our main data so column a i need to know the last row of that so that will store here in the last data row now we're ready to run our first advanced filter our first advanced filter is going to start out uh, let's go ahead and clear the contents first. We clear any previous results, BA4. So we clear any previous results. Now we run our advanced filter. Starting in A3, we must use the headers. A3, 3 contains our headers. G is the last column and our last data row. Here's our main data. What are we going to do? We're going to run an advanced filter. 
what type of filter is going to be copy we're copying the data to a new range and where we're going to run our criteria what is the criteria it's AA3 to AJ4 our criteria is right here AA3 must include the headers to AJ4 it must include all of this and keep in mind that these headers purchase date purchase price they must be exactly exactly like they are here the headers must match that's even it's just one character off we'll get an error so make sure you match those headers identically so we when our criteria must include the first row of our head the header and then our values so it's going to be from AA3 to AJ4 those are the header values so we've done just that here and where are we going to copy that information we're going to copy that all the way from BA3 to BG3 that's where we want our results to go and we want unique to be true so again here we want to copy that our first results right here BA3 to BG3 we want those results copied right here and that's where we're going to go so that is our first advanced filter that is running and that will provide these results the next thing I want to do is I want to determine the last row of our first advanced filter so I need to know and copy that and then we're going to run one more and then another one so two total so we do that through here so we've run our advanced filter now we get our last row of our results that's in BA that's the advanced filter we just ran those results are going to be in column BA and so we get our last results row one we have many result rows so this is our first row and we're going to run a check if there's no data in other words if this results is less than four that means there's no data so we, we can skip all of this and go right to here if there's no data we can skip everything else but in this case we do have data so we'll continue on now we're going to run our advanced filter again but we're going to base it on list types so now what I need to do is I need to say okay let's go ahead and take a look at this and I see need to say okay I need to run the advanced filter but I only I want to get I want to find out all the selected items only the selected items and I want to put those selected items where do I want to put them I want to put them right here so we so for now we've got five selected items five selected items here one two three four five not including t-shirt right I want to take those selected items and I want to put them right here in criteria two because I want to take this results and I want to say okay now you've got these results, these four results, and I want to run them through these filters, and I want to filter out anything. So for example, this filter doesn't contain, let's take a look, t-shirt, right? So you see how there's one value, it says t-shirt right here. So I want to run it through this filter. This says there's no, it must, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this, but there's no t-shirts there. So I want to filter out anything that doesn't have a t-shirt like this row here and I want to put it right in here so those results there's one less and then I want to do the same thing for size let's do it let's do it here so for example I want to take out large right now I want to say okay now I want to run it through another filter these five sizes but there's only two so again here we are with size look there's no large right here's our list five sizes no large so I want to take this list I'm gonna run it through this third criteria and look there's no large so I want to make sure to take out the results are right here now we've got the final results we're gonna take this total and we're gonna paste it right in here just those two results right I know it's I know it's a lot to handle but it is super powerful because you can build amazing tables and very user-friendly lists that are dynamic when you get this advanced filters are so powerful and uh, it's a kind of a learning curve but uh, when you understand the steps then it's super powerful so I'm, I'm really happy to show this to you so next up we run through we've gone through list type of change here and uh, we've gone through this so we we've gone through advanced filter one and now we're going to advanced filter two on the list type of change so we know it's a list type of change we went through the criteria and then we're gonna clear so now we move along to list type row we've done that right and now we've gone we're gonna go through advanced filter two again we're gonna delete the filters 
we're going to delete and going to run our advanced filter are from BA3 through BG in the last results row. Remember, we determined the last results row. And now we're going to run, here's the advanced filter, and now we're going to copy this filter to B, and then we're going to use the criteria BY. Let's show you that again, because it's confusing a little bit. So again, we're going to on we're on we're on we're going to take the the filter we're good we've got our last row b a through b g that's our advanced filter the criteria is b y we got our last row so we know the last row of our criteria criteria to last row we're going to run this advanced filter and we're going to place it right here c a through c g let's go over just that line of code here it is right here b a three to the last results row we're going to run the advanced filter we're going to copy it. We're going to use the criteria BY and the last criteria row in BY. Last criteria row BY is here, right? BY, so we determine the last row. The criteria is the type, so we know how many. And where are we going to copy that to? CA3 to CG3 and unique. Where are we going to copy it to? CA3 to CG. CA3 to CG copying it right there. That's it. We're going to repeat the same exact process for criteria three. Same exact process. Just what you saw. The same thing here. Now we're in. Now we've run the advanced filter too. And now that's it. Now we're going to run the second one. We're going to the last results row. Now it's CA. We're getting the last results. And now we're going to run our advanced filter for CA. This is the last one. And so and so here it is. Again, CA through CG, we know the last row, copying CY. CY is our unique for unique list for let's show you that again. CY is our unique list for size. Again, CA, this is the last filter. The data is here. CA to CG using this as our criteria and the results go right into DA through D DA through DG. The results, our final results go through here. That is our last advanced filter right here. CA3 is our data, our criteria CY. That's the size, right? That's the sizes. And our results go right here, DA. So now we have the results. Now we just need to get the last row of our results. I need to know how many to copy over, right? So I need to get this last row. In this case, the last row is five. So I need to copy over this data, but I need to know the last row. So last row is DA, we're gonna use DA. And we need to get that last row right here. So DA, this will give us our last results row. And we're just gonna run a check here. Is that if it's less than four, that means there's no data. Okay, we're going to clear. I guess we don't need it. We've already cleared that out. Now, now we just need one line of code to copy over. G A G13 of sheet one, M in the last results row. This is our third last results row, plus nine. Why are we adding plus nine? Let me show you that. Our results start here on four and they go to five, right? Our results here start on 13 and go to 14. So we need to add 9 because our results, they start in different rows. So if they start in 4 on the other sheet, they need to go to 9. So we must, they need to go to 13. So we must add 9 so that it accurately places data in the right rows here. So G13 through M and the last row equals DA4 through DG in the last row. So that's how we get our data with that line of code, and we've done that right here. G13 through M, last row, plus nine equals sheet two, DA4 through DG in the last results row. Copy over the filtered data. We don't need this, it's done already. So now we're good to go. Now we mark A9 as false. We're just gonna select G13, that just reloads whatever data, that just reloads the data, and we're good. That is exactly how we run advanced filters. So I hope you have liked this training. It's a very powerful. We can clear the filters. We can provide single click advanced filters 
through a left panel. We can also filter by name, which is very powerful. We can filter using from and to into values. For example, one, we can filter out through price, which is also very powerful. We can do filter by quantity, although we all have one quantity. We can clear the filters. We can also close and hide the filters. And it is the dynamic filter. It is based on the number of types or sizes that we have on a list type. So it's extremely powerful advanced filtering. I hope you have liked this training. If you do get a chance, I would love for you to share this, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. Also, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. That helps us out a great deal, and that also ensures that you get alerted to new videos when you do select the alert icon. That is very helpful to us, and it will get you. You can also check out our blog, and please like us and share us. Thank you very much for joining.